Hole 1 is a 270 foot par 3 tunnel shot. You have one major obstacle in your way, a tree that divides the fairway. Miss left or right of this and pick a disc with little left to right play to scoop up an early birdie. Try to avoid early left and right as these areas are thick and difficult to save par once you get too far off the fairway. Hole 2 is a par 3 that comes in at 408 feet. Get your driver out and set one out there as far as you can. If this is in your wheelhouse, let it rip straighter than you would think and let the disc naturally finish left if you're a righty. Lefties may want to forehand or pick a disc that will work left for you near the end of the flight. If this is not in your wheelhouse for the birdie, take that fairway driver out and land in the middle. Throw a nice upshot and tap in your par. Hole 3 is a par 3 right around 275 feet. Your goal is to miss the big cluster of trees in the middle that separates this fairway into an inside route and an outside route. My personal choice is the inside route because it's a little more direct. Pick a disc that will bend left for you, not drastically though, and you should be able to knock on the door of circle 1. Hole 4 is a par 3 at 278 feet. This is the throw it straight hole, so get out your throw it straight disc. There is a slight uphill elevation to this fairway, so you might feel the need to disc up from a mid-range to a fairway driver. Whatever you choose, make sure you lace it straight. Hole 5 is a par 3 and comes in at 353 feet. This hole is separated into a left and right gap. Avoid the cluster of trees in the middle. Be careful if you get kicked to the left or right on this fairway. Some spots are very tricky to get out of and may require you to set down a roller if you find yourself too far in the rough. Hole 6 is a par 3, 275 foot hook to the left with an elevation change halfway down the fairway. Avoid the lone pine in the middle to have a good chance of getting on the green. This green is one of the more open ones on the course. Make sure to account for wind in this area and adjust accordingly when putting. Hole 7 is 359 feet of lefty hyzer heaven, or if you're a righty, forehand heaven. And if you're none of these, well, my advice is to throw it straight about 300 feet and gamble a long putt. This hole is tricky and I've witnessed several players get stuck in the rough and have no upshot. The tee pad is elevated here and you are throwing slightly downhill, so that 300 feet does come up quick, so don't overthrow it. Hole 8 is a par 3 at 350 feet. This fairway is so very close to a straight shot that most people will pick a straighter flying fairway driver and let the disc finish out naturally. Avoid any sort of really overstable disc as the shape of the fairway won't agree with it and you may end up in the nasty rough on the left or on the right. Hole 9 comes in at 325 feet and has two options, left and right. Pick a lane and commit all the way. 
you will be dealing with the same type of rough on the edges as previous holes, so beware. My personal preference is to go the right lane here straight at it, as it seems to be the lane with the least amount of obstacles in the way. Hole 10 is 269 feet and finishes to the right. As a righty backhand dominant player, my trick here is to throw a putter or a mid-range straight and let it slowly fade right at the end, leaving me with a nice putt for a birdie. Righty forehanders will have a great time here as this shot is just made for that shape. Lefties will probably seem like cheaters because it's a hyzer. Throw a hyzer. Hole 11 is the first par 4 on the course, coming in at 757 feet. Your objective is to throw it straight to the first bend or crest of the hill. If you can get to the corner, you will have a much easier time snagging your par and even a chance at a birdie 3. Once to the corner, some players will choose to go up and over everything or take the tunnel downhill right at it. My biggest advice is to choose a straight flying fairway driver off the tee to land in the middle and set up your second shot. Hole 12 is an uphill par 3 at 258 feet. It finishes fairly straight, but the basket sits on double kegs for an elevated putting green. Some players will choose to go straight at it nice and low, while others will throw up and over the pines to the right and crash down on the green. Both ways work, but be wary of wind if you are going over the top. Hole 13 is the second par 4 of the course, coming in at 615 feet. It is not surprising that my advice to you is to stay as straight as possible off the tee. The theme of awful rough left and right continues, but you do want to push this drive as far as you can to get to the crest of this massive hill. If you can just make it to the top, your second shot will be a tunnel shot straight at it for a potential birdie. If all else fails, taking a par 4 is not bad at all. Hole 14 comes in just under 400 feet and bends ever so slightly to the right. This one isn't birdied too often, so my advice is to get around the corner and into the open. Avoid left and right and you should take an easy three. For those with the power to get there, my personal recommendation is a mid-range for the slower left-to-right finish. As a backhand lefty, you should crush a nice overstable disc and let it finish for a potential birdie. Hole 15 is 282 feet and bends to the right. Pick a disc that you can shape to finishing right and let it rip. Be careful though because the end of this hole gets tricky. Two pines protect the basket if you are coming in too high. If this happens and you are cut short, you are left with a death putt because right behind the basket is a steep drop off. Come in too low at the pines and you still might get caught short in the sandy soil. Hole 16 has two lanes in the 312 foot par 3. The left lane, which is much wider, and the right lane, which is smaller, but a more familiar safe shot for righty backhand hyzers. I usually throw a mid-range here because the fairway goes slightly downhill until the end. Around the basket, you will have to contend with a couple trees. So don't be surprised if you have to switch to a straddle putt to get a look at the basket. Hole 17 is a 270 foot straight tunnel shot. 
pick your go-to straight flyer and make sure you are lined up correctly on the tee pad for a nice straight shot. This is a nice birdie to get, so don't miss the opportunity. The final hole measures around 260 feet and is a must get birdie to finish the round. The right side of the fairway seems a little more open than the left, so try to utilize that side of the fairway. Near the basket you will see a downward sloping green, so make sure you recognize the elevation changes when putting. <laughs> 